Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. It is 1.15 p.m. here in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. And the temperature is 76 degrees. Just decided to do a little live walk during my lunch break today. Sometimes I forget that there's these LED boards in Cleveland at the corner of East 9th and Prospect. We're also outside the Cuyahoga County Administration headquarters. Behind me, I didn't show it, but Wild Eagle Saloon, where I ate mac and cheese during mac and cheese week would have been back there. For some perspective to my left, it's a progressive field. There's no baseball game today. Unfortunate because it would have been great weather for fans to come out, as will the next couple of days. Nice to see the wide array of electric scooters and bicycles. But for today's walk, don't have a particular agenda other than strolling around a bit and enjoying the weather and getting out. Sometimes it's nice to just get out of the office for a break during lunch. This is the Metropolitan Nine Hotel. And whatever restaurant is on the lower level here. It looks like they have Cleveland's original bank vaults located below the Nine. Oh, so the food place is Adega. Lunch time from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So let's see here. What's an item that I would order? Probably the meatball hoagie for $14. Meatballs, cheese on a sub roll. Or a burger for $14. Let's see. There's an asterisk. Oh, I'm just talking about the quality of the meat. I was checking if they had fries. Oh, so this is interesting. I'm always an advocate of bicycle racks. I see they have a, a bicycle rack dedicated for the 9 over here. Too, too similar. I mean, it looks like 99, but it's really the 9 shaped like a bicycle rack. Oh, so it says the Heinen's East 9th door is now open. Does that mean this door? I'm betting it is. That, uh, that would be directly into the rotunda, I think. I'm not sure if they've started opening the rotunda for all the meat counters and sandwich areas where you can grab lunch. I know Mitchell's Ice Cream was supposed to open a new kiosk in the Rotunda sometime in May. I'm not sure if that is open already or close to being open. That should be pretty exciting to have Mitchell's. And I believe part of the plan was along with Mitchell's moving in that everything else in that Rotunda was going to reopen for the first time since... Uh, the pandemic concluded, or I don't want to say concluded, but the meat of the pandemic ended. So during so many of my live streams, I end up walking down Euclid Avenue, try to do something a little bit different today.
go down East 9th Street. There's Chester up ahead. The first Walnut Wednesdays of the year are supposed to take place at Perk Plaza tomorrow. It was originally supposed to be last week, but it was a dreary and rainy day, so they postponed it to this week. Perk Plaza is just, you know, one block down where, across from 19 Action News at Reserve Square. I might head on down to that for the first Walnut Wednesday tomorrow at lunchtime and possibly do a live stream video of that. you need to do shipping business downtown, there's a FedEx office here next to the Ohio Savings Bank. should have made this connection in the past when they call it Walnut Wednesdays. I guess, I guess the reason they call it Walnut Wednesdays is the side street here is Walnut. There's the Key Bank building. I always look at that for many years when I'm going by on the bus heading home to see what the temperature is and what time it is. Granted, I have a lot of time. I could just look at the watch, but it's nice to see. It is accurate, 75 degrees. And the time is accurate, too. Dave says I love Walnut Wednesdays. I've never actually been to it. <laughs> I went to a few, there used to, used to be some lunchtime events hosted during the summer there for, for uh, I think Entercom Radio hosted them for several years before the pandemic. They did like four events a year and one of them would be held at Perk Plaza. But I never actually went to the Walnut Wednesday so that's why I'm kind of excited to try it out either tomorrow or a different week. As I'm walking, I started wondering to myself, I wonder if the Eastman Garden at the library is open for the spring season yet. So maybe I'll walk by there and we'll check if that's open. Here. I see a barber shop sign here. Ty's barber shop or Ty Barber's Ty Barber's Barber Shop. Sorry. That was a tongue twister for me. So for as many times as I've been by here, I just assume this is vacant space. I wonder if there's actually businesses in here right now. You see Fo I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. Fo Fo Tang Cafe. It says there's also Mumba Sauce. Four Bean Coffee, A Touch of Epiphany, Day Spa, and then Thai Barber's Barber Shop, and Cleveland Sandwich. And there are signs here that say, now open, Cleveland Sandwich Company. Yeah, so that's funny. Again, I go by here all the time. I had no clue that there were businesses actively operating in there. That's one of the reasons why I like 
doing these live streams too because it helps me slow down, pause, and look at everything actually rather than zooming and rushing to my bus stop. Maybe I'll slow down a little bit too and look at the statue here next to the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland building. I need to remember that I can do that nice zoom out feature to give the whole perspective picture of it. I feel like there's a courtyard, you know, in between the buildings. Maybe behind this door here, there's access to it. I think on the right side, or if, I, if you turn right at East 6th Street, I always see advertisements for the Cleveland Money Museum. That's also something I've never actually been inside of. I used to often wait for my 22 bus here at East 6th and Superior. But now I wait at East Roadway and Superior because the 22 doesn't come this far anymore. Since I mentioned it, let me walk by the Cleveland Money Museum and then I'll go. No, oh, sorry, I'm not sure. Money Museum. Let me try to zoom out again. Free admission, it says that on the sign, so I assume that's true. Let's read what the building says if they're open. All right, so it does say Money Museum closed to walk in visitors, COVID-19. Although it does say welcome visitors, come in and learn about all things money. I'm going to assume they would have taken this sign down if it truly was open. So that'll be interesting. Maybe inquiry when they're going to reopen this. Because you feel like most things have reopened since the start of COVID-19. That's all I'm surprised to see it closed. Maybe it's more of a... I don't know who operates the museum. Maybe it's more of a lack of volunteers or workers at this point. You see up ahead where that person is depositing items into the library book drop return. I use that all the time in the, the morning. Usually what ends up happening when I rent items from the library and then I want to return them, I take the bus, get off down there, and then it's like 7.30 a.m. in the morning, so I'll walk over here. The library's not open yet, so I'll just drop the items off and then continue on my way to work. No, it doesn't look like the garden's open. 
why haven't they opened it yet for the season? I thought I saw the doors open one day last week. Celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Uh, at least we can look at our little friends here. Well, even if we can't go inside the garden, I'll try to show the view of it, because this is really nice when it's open. I always think of it as a hidden gem in downtown Cleveland. It'd be a great spot if you grab lunch somewhere, just sit and relax. There's some shady spots that are covered by the trees, plenty of seating. Or you can just grab a book during your lunchtime and read it. But yeah, surprised that it's not open for the spring season yet. Here's the garden gates. I forgot the artist's name, but the same artist made both these gates and all the little characters that you see. For example, you see that character there. He's like holding up the beam. The guy's up there carrying letters. The letter A, the letter C, B. And then there's other letters actually on the, the gate itself. I don't know if it spells something. Yeah, I'm trying to read. It doesn't really make out anything that I can spell. <laughs> I guess the artist is showing off their... I guess it's true they don't have clothing on, so that would make sense. And this one has a little helmet on. And then there's... A, other ones carrying books and actually reading in the garden. One of the things I like too is often throughout the year they will have art exhibits temporarily located in the garden for a couple weeks at a time. So if I see one of those this year, I'll probably do a walkthrough of that. Some more nice sculptures embedded within the buildings. This is the other half of the library building. I wonder what the Roman numeral stands for. I have walked this path during live streams many a times. I know it's a bit redundant, but it's such a beautiful day. Might as well get the view of the eternal fountain and looks like the grass was just cut it had to be cut either today or yesterday 
superstition. Never want to walk on that. And you can't see on the stream. There's actually you actually see a big ladder down there. Where if they took that grate off, you could walk down the steps. Robert Carp says, "Can you go inside CPL now?" All oh, the Roman numerals, 1923. Nice. Uh, I don't know if you were asking me if I can go inside Cleveland Public Library or if you're asking if it's open for people to go in. The reason I don't want to go in right now during a live stream is in, inside of most buildings I just assume that my internet connection will die out pretty quickly. That's why I try to keep the live streams outdoors. But at some point I, I'd like to splice together some pre-recorded videos to show off the some of the architecture and decorations inside the library. But if you're asking if it's open period, then yes, it is open and has been open for a while uh, since the pandemic. This is also another great spot to just, if you're looking to, you may not be as convenient to eat downtown, but there are some benches if you want to relax during a lunch break, catch some of the cool water breeze blowing, and nice mist blowing my direction right now. the library. Oftentimes I go inside the, I'm trying to think what, which one is called the Lewis Stokes Wing, but I go inside the newer building to just check, uh, grab items that are on hold so I don't actually go in the older building where the fancier or old style architecture is. I have been in there of course, but just the number of times I go in is usually usually to the new building. Caught a nice break with no cars coming. We're kind of close up now, so you sort of lose the perspective of how nice all the green grass looks, but we'll walk up the ramp here. Because all of this is ground that's above the Huntington Convention Center of Cleveland. So I guess inadvertently the theme of today's live stream can be nice spots to sit and eat that we're showing off during a lunch break. Because there's plenty of benches here along the greenery. Robert asks, is the hotel tower on the left fairly new? If you're talking about the Hilton Hotel, yeah, it's fairly new. I don't remember the exact year, but I feel like it's been within the past... 10 years. 
as has the medical health innovation building which I read some news articles that I don't know if it's a city or county or whatever was either applying for or got funding I'm not sure which to renovate that building again which a lot of people were complaining about online because I think a lot of people feel it's a waste because it's probably very underutilized and yet they're trying to get more funding to do something with it yeah but I think the Hilton has been a nice building overlooks the lakefront and first energy stadium where the Cleveland Browns play feels like it's getting even hotter right now. The wind, surprisingly, has died down. I thought it would get a little stronger closer to the lake. These crosswalks that are that I just crossed twice are the ones where you press the button and the yellow lights kind of ring up and it's up to the cars to stop for you which I don't necessarily trust those it does work most of the time but there's what I was talking about the Huntington Convention Center so you can go in there and then all that grass that we just passed up above it is on top of the convention center. I knew when Hopper electric bikes, well it says Hopper there but these are bird bikes. When bird bikes were unveiled into the Cleveland system about two months ago, oh interesting. Hello Cleveland, take 50% off this ride with code CLE BIKE. But when these bikes were first introduced a month or two ago, I think they had the official unveiling at this spot right here, or somewhere in this mall area. So that makes sense that they have the bikes there. I know it's, you know, a lot of the purpose of these electric bikes or scooters are to have them where you can drop them anywhere, but I like when they have certain docks or bike racks around the city. It just makes it easier to find them, in my opinion, and know where to safely, safely drop them off at. Garrett Foucher says, Thank you for all the informative Cleveland content. I've been watching your videos to get an idea of the city and had a question. And then you say... What do you think of the neighborhood just south of Edgewater Park, right next to West Boulevard Cadell Station? All right, let me try to paint a picture in my head about that area. So if you're saying just south of Edgewater Park, right next to West Boulevard Cadell Station, hmm. So I kind of live, or my the main area I grew up in was near the West Boulevard and Lorraine Avenue area. So that's further away from where you're asking because I've walked from, for example, uh, sometimes I'll take the West Boulevard Rapid Station 
the train to go there and then I'll walk from the West Boulevard station to West Boulevard Lorraine about a 15 minute walk and I would say right at the West Boulevard station up until Madison Avenue that little area is kind of like eh I'm always on guard with where I'm at and then a little bit north of the West Boulevard station maybe until you reach Clifton I also feel like I'm on guard because sometimes I'll ride my bike from Edgewater Park all the way home so I pass through that area so Edgewater Park and a little bit south up until Clifton I feel like is pretty good but then right where like Detroit Avenue is by the West Boulevard station I think there are still some safety improvements that need to be had in that area I hear some type of construction, I don't know where, some hammer banging on something and vibrating in the background. What is that below us? Almost looks like a farm. You know what I wonder? Someone on social media because on Twitter I follow a lot of people who tweet content about downtown Cleveland and someone over the past week was tweeting pictures of like oh pigs or some other animals in the farm in downtown Cleveland and they were tagging downtown and I was thinking to myself where in the heck in downtown Cleveland is is that located I wonder if I wonder if it's this area although I don't see any animals actively down there Garrett Foucher also says, As a cyclist, I really appreciated your bike ride video. Look forward to exploring some of the trails. Yes, I, I also look forward to... Again, I've said this before in my videos, as silly as it sounds, there's like a lot of trails I have not explored yet myself, and I've lived here all my life. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to filming a few more of those videos. Maybe even this week? I don't know. I'll see if I bring my bike with me one of these days this week. Robert Carp asks, have you taken Amtrak from the station below? No, I've, I've yet to take Amtrak. I have not taken Greyhound. And then even though I know that's not here anymore, but when Megabus was here, I had not taken Megabus before. So I've never taken any of those things from Cleveland or anywhere else. So unfortunately I don't have any experience with that. I, f I feel like I know where the Greyhound station is located. It's by Chester and East 13th Street. I feel like I've read before that the Amtrak station is that way by the Burke Lake Front Airport, but I could be completely wrong on that. I'm just trying to Sometimes I look at the pricing rates just out of curiosity, like, oh, I wonder how much it costs to, to do this route versus an airplane. I feel like I'll probably take one one day. Looks like they're doing some construction outside of Willard Park. Maybe not. I guess I wouldn't call that Willard Park yet. Willard Park is just past the construction. But either way, it's on the sidewalk, so I have to walk on the street here.
Robert says, I thought you were looking at the station earlier. Hmm. If it was when I was leaning over that ledge, I know the RTA waterfront line, which is still not operational right now, runs through there. There's a stop station over there. You can't probably see it right now. Here's Willard Park. If anyone was listening toward the beginning of my stream, I talked about Perk Plaza and how some of those summer events that I used to attend, like they used to do lunchtime four times a year and give some free food and other things, but Willard Park was another location they used to host those at. I keep Googling, like, are they going to do it again? But doesn't look like they're coming back at least this year. I attended those probably for like four or five years and they were always a nice little treat to go to several times a year. And not to beat a dead horse, but I can't believe how much the wind has like completely died. When I started this live stream, I was surprised that I felt a couple of gusts of wind. And now it's like completely stagnant air. It's got to be up to 80 degrees now. Yeah, so if that's maybe the station you were referring to, if that's what I pointed to, that is the part of the RTA transit system and the waterfront line, which wasn't used a ton to begin with in the past. Uh, I think it was mainly used for Cleveland Browns games. And it does take you to the flats as well. I don't know exactly how many stops there are. I feel like there's at least three stops that I know of for sure. Probably a fourth stop at least too. But like I said, it's has not been operational for a while. And there's no word on it really reopening. If Cleveland ends up developing more of the lakefront and getting more restaurants and small business down here, I know some people want to get rid of Burke Lakefront Airport, move all that action to Hopkins, and then develop where Burke is. But again, if something like that were to happen, you're probably talking years and years down the road because there's not even a... blueprint of what that would look like right now. So Robert says, I confirmed it. It was the Amtrak station you were looking at. All right, cool then. So it must be something down that way. And whatever I was pointing to, I must not have realized what it was. So maybe they used the same tracks because I know, or I thought that Amtrak, like, where you pick up the train. I thought it was somewhere in this direction. Again, I could be way off base on that. That's, that's what I thought I remember when I looked it up in the past. I know earlier Garrett was talking about the bicycle trails that he was looking forward to in Cleveland. 
Let me cross the street here first. But I think somewhere, probably not here, maybe on this street here. That's a sign for Burke Lake, Burke Lake Front Airport, by the way. Maybe it's on North Marginal Road. I feel like there's a bike trail that takes you more to the east side. I've seen on Google Maps before, but I've never ridden it. I don't think it's a particularly scenic bike trail. Okay, I do see a sign over there. It says Coastal Trail. So yeah, the bike trail must be over there. And like I said, at least initially, I don't think it's particularly scenic. That's another trail. Probably be interesting for me to explore one day. I was about to say, it looks like the windows are in need of a wash at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And that's where you've got the workers in action right now. Cleaning the windows. Looks like some kids were here on a field trip. Looks like this year's inductees, Eminem. Jimmy Avine, I remember him from American Idol. Not as a performer, of course, but uh, what is he, like a producer or something like that? Across the street says the United States Coast Guard, and there's also a sign that says Blue Star Memorial, attributed, I think, to the armed forces that defend the United States of America. The font is small, so I'm trying my best to read it. I wonder if the new bridge is operational. I saw on social, or I know it's it opened probably like a month ago, but I saw over the past few days some people on Twitter were posting pictures that the bridge was uh, up in the air, meaning you couldn't walk it. It was up so that potential watercrafts could pass through. I always wonder from an outsider's perspective if they just watched the video, for example, on the path that I walked today, would they be surprised that Cleveland has all these like green spaces and areas that have pretty beautiful scenery? Or do they already know that? It looks like the bridge is down, so that's good. I If the stream stays alive, I'll Go ahead and walk that. Disclaimer about the bridge though. <laughs> I kind of feel this way too and a lot of people that I've read online have the same impression. Like, it seems like such a big waste of money 
because all it does is connect you from that point to that point over there which you could do the same thing by walking exactly where I'm at right now and then going that way so it's not like a huge detour and it doesn't seem like such a pressing need that you would need a bridge there but it is what it is right <laughs> wonder if anyone's going on a cruise today. Nice to see some people dining outdoors. Yet another green space right along Lake Erie. And these views always remain my favorite views of downtown Cleveland. Like, I just think it's, granted, you can get an even more picturesque view where the Cleveland script sign is down there, but just talking about the background imagery, you've got the water, the little boat scenery, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Great Lake Science Center, and then you've got the shot of Key Tower, Terminal Tower, the Hilton, other buildings, First Energy Stadium, the Blue Sky, the Cleveland Cliffs, William G. Mather ship. Yeah, let's check out this brand new bridge. First, let's look at the plane flying above us from Burke Lake Front. <laughs> yes, here's the brand new operational bridge. I assume the guy inside here controls the bridge. So it says stop, do not enter when bridge is in operation or when ringing. Unfortunately, there's a screw hole right where the letter G is in the word ringing, but hopefully people know what that means. So we've got the green light. So this is the new construction. Hey, I don't want to, I'm not trying to knock it. It's probably, to a degree, I'm sure it's cool to be able to make like a full square around this area without having to walk all the way back. You know, you just think to yourself like, oh, you know, how much money it probably costs versus how much it'll actually get utilized. Because it's not the entire thing. Like, this stuff already existed. The piers that were here. It's just literally this part up until the other stoplight here. Yeah, so that was it. It, it is being utilized already several times since I've been here. So maybe I'm unfairly knocking it. You can see the little bridge, so whenever a boat is trying to 
get over to this side, presumably the bridge will be lifted for them to go over there. But that's what some people on Twitter were talking about yesterday. There were no boats, yet the bridge was up, so you couldn't even walk the bridge. If you walk past that, it just takes you over by First Energy Stadium. I guess they have a jungle gym at the Great Lakes Science Center. I like the alternating color of the benches, like how there's orange and blue and mixed like a magenta color. Let's see what this artwork looking thing is. It looks like a spiraling, almost like a spiraling train track or staircase. I didn't notice this before too, a sound bench. Place your ear over the opening in each pipe, listen to background noises through each pipe. Can you distinguish between sounds made by people and other exhibits? Hmm. I was going to say, is there a way I can really try it out, but that's alright. Probably lots of little kids have had their ears or mouths right up to that. <laughs> I wonder if they still have, I think it was a McDonald's. I feel like when I did all my field trips as a ki elementary school kid, that we would go in the food court here and I thought they had a McDonald's in there. Maybe I'm mistaken on that. You could also walk that way and get underneath that little area there, which would take you back to, I don't know if you saw that street vendor that was selling food when I was approaching that area initially. That's where that would connect you out of.
you know, right there, that's actually a pretty nice shot as well, seeing the stairs, the trees. Again, terminal tower, key tower, just barely peeking out. I know it's a lot of tourist related stuff down here like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Great Lakes Science Center, but there are still a fair amount of people out who I feel like aren't tourists. And there's a, only that one restaurant that was near the Cleveland Script sign. I just still wonder if you develop that more and get more restaurants down here. Can you turn this into a really booming area of downtown Cleveland? Well, I know it can be successful. You, you hear about it in, I believe Chicago has it like that. I saw it when I was in San Diego at Seaport Village. Seattle, to a degree, had it as well. New York City, of course, has it in a lot of spots. While I still have five to six viewers watching, I should throw in that if you like this video, I'd always appreciate you hitting that like button on YouTube, or if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe. I know I've been busy with some personal life stuff, but I haven't shot nearly as many videos as I would like to, but it's still been encouraging to watch the subscriber count trickle up and then see some comments on older videos come in here and there. It's always a fun experience to be able to share these adventures. Even though I was on the other side of the street earlier, I'm just going to walk down a tiny bit here to check out these signs. Rear Admiral Isaac C. Kidd, born in Cleveland, 1884, was in the Naval Academy. There's a historical marker there for him. And then here's that sign I was talking about earlier. Blue Star Memorial. Okay, I thought it said attributed earlier, but it says a tribute to the armed forces that have defended the United States of America, sponsored by the Garden Club of Ohio, in cooperation with the United States Coast Guard Harbor Station. I see on the signs up there it says 
Christmas in July, when's or July 23rd for Christmas in July at North Coast Harbor. So it's interesting. Wonder what that'll be. Maybe put that on your calendars. On the left there it also says Lakefront Leagues Wednesday evenings July through August. I don't know exactly what that means. But there must be something that they do down here regularly during those Wednesday evenings. I'm not going to walk all the way down here. I just want to take a quick peek. I see the sign that says Lake Erie Coastal Trail and Cleveland Lakefront Bikeway. There's this tiny portion here. I don't feel like this is the trail. It probably starts on the other side of the street where that red pavers are, or bricks in the ground. Oh, you know what? Okay, I see what it is. So at least for the start of this trail, the bike path is the street path because you see the bicycles marked on the ground going either direction. But then I'm pretty sure when I've looked on Google Maps before, once you reach a certain point, again I could be wrong, remembering wrong, but I believe that it converts into an actual dedicated bike path. Now we're at the one hour mark, or just past the one hour mark of this live stream, so I'm going to get ready to head back to work, and I don't want to venture too far on down because I don't think I can cross the freeway. I think I need to eventually go back to East 9th Street and go back up the way I came from. So, thank you to everyone who tuned in or ends up watching this video. Again, if you liked our little Tuesday afternoon walk around in downtown Cleveland, feel free to hit the like button, give us a subscribe if you haven't already, and always feel free to leave a comment below the video. And we will see you next time. I might do a Walnut Wednesday walk tomorrow around noon on a live stream, so if I decide to do that, and it interests you, feel free to tune in. But thanks again for watching, everyone.